Today we're gonna make the Ring Temp Smurgle so hard, he's gonna mill out the opponent's entire deck. Well, hello there, random person on the internet, and in this video, we're gonna combine Magic the Gathering with totally lore accurate Lord of the Rings. Like that time when Frodo bought the ring off CardKingdom.com and then played it in his commander deck instead of tossing it into Mount Doom. Wait. You mean to tell me that's not how it happened? I'm sorry, I didn't read the books. Let's jump into the games. Here we are, pretty solid hand. Jada and Orkish Bowmasters both create disposable creatures. Perfect fodder to sacrifice for value with village rights and diabolic intent. Play a land, see what our opponent is up to. Sun Petal Grove tapped. Well, let's get started with Jada, Ghoul Caller of Nephalia. Just a 2 mana 1 1, but at the beginning of our end step, if we don't control any decayed creatures, we create a 2 2 decayed zombie token. Opponent plays an island and Giada, Font of Hope, so they are banned angels. We did draw a land here, but since it's a green source, we can't cast two spells this turn if we play it, so let's instead use Diabolic Intent, sacrifice a creature to search our library for any card, get a Phyrexian Tower, play it, end of turn, we create a zombie. Glacial Fortress, swings for two. Bishop of Wings, Youthful Valkyrie, gains four. Yep, just doing angel things over there. Let's use Phyrexian Tower, sacrifice the zombie to add two mana and cast Orcish Bowmasters. When it enters the battlefield and whenever an opponent draws a card except for the first one they draw in their draw strap, it deals one damage to any target and amass Orcs one. Sadly, their creatures have too much toughness to get got by this, but the Orc army is just the right creature to sacrifice to the this diabolic intent. Get a Smurgle Helpful Guide, a 3 mana 4-2 with at the beginning of your end step, if a creature died under your control this turn, the ring tempts you and whenever the ring tempts you, target opponent reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a land card. Put that card onto the battlefield under your control and the rest into their graveyard. Now this might seem a little greedy, but we do need to sacrifice a creature to have enough mana to cast Smergo this turn, so sorry Bowmasters, cast Smergo and now at the end of turn not only do we get a zombie from Jadar, we also get tempted by the ring, meaning we have to choose a ring bearer. This zombie seems trustworthy, let's put it right here. Now that the ring tempted us, Smergo's second ability will trigger. Steals a hollowed fountain, mills two cards, pass the turn, Heliot, so they probably play the infinite combo as well, swings for four, missed a land drop and passes back, alright, let's start off by sacrificing our zombie to the tower, add two mana to cast Call of the Ring, so now we can draw cards when the ring tempts us, play Boromir, Varden of the Tower, play a Triumph, and let's pass into our end step to get that value, create a zombie, turn it into the ring bearer, trigger Smurgo to steal a land, and now Call of the Ring will let us pay two life to draw a card whenever we get tempted, let's hope they don't go infinite, Land, Angel of Vitality, fine with me, grows the team, swings in. I kinda don't wanna go down to one because then we can't draw extra cards when we get tempted, so block with Jada and then sacrifice it to Village Rights, draw two cards. Oh, well, some of you already know what's gonna happen soon. In our upkeep, Call of the Ring tempts us, Smergold triggers, mills some cards. We could pay two life to draw a card, but uh, we kinda already have everything we need here. Play Ratadrabic of Orborg. Whenever another legendary creature you control dies, create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's not legendary and it's a 2-2 black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. And now it's probably time to read Boromir's ability as well. Sac Sacrifice it, creatures you control gain indestructible end of turn and the ring tempts you. Now I gotta applaud Wizards card design team here. This is just like in the movie. Remember when Boromir sacrificed himself over and over again and then Gollum looked at this and said, Oh my god, I'm so goddamn tempted by this ring, I could like steal all of Sauron's land or something, I don't know, and mill them? Okay, so here's what's gonna happen. If we activate and sacrifice Boromir, Ratadrabic will see a legendary creature die and create a non-legendary token copy of it. If we stack the trigger so Boromir's ring tempting happens afterwards, we can choose the new Boromir as the ring bearer, which will turn it legendary again and trigger Smurgle to mill our opponent. Now we can sacrifice the legendary Boromir token again and loot 
repeat this entire process as many times as we want, steal every land from our opponent's library and dump the rest into their graveyard. Then we pass the turn and that is GG. Magic how Tolkien intended. I mean, of course this deck got to have some more tricks up its sleeve. Let's jump right into the next one. Play a land, pass the turn, opponent does the same, turn to Jadar again, you love to see it, end of turn, create a zombie. Planes and a Soul Warden. Good thing we are technically a mill deck because our combo loop will give them a bunch of life with this. Play a land, swing in with a zombie. Since it's decayed, it will sacrifice itself after combat, which is very convenient because that means we can play Smergol and since a creature died this turn, we will trigger it right away. Create a zombie, declare it as the ring bearer. Steal a mountain, mill three, pass the turn, land, brutal Cathar, and as the battlefield, exiles a creature until it leaves the battlefield. There goes our Smirgol. Now looking at the cards we've milled and the cards they've played so far, we should probably try to find a board wipe. So diabolic intent, sacrifice the zombie, get the meat hook massacre, play a triome, end of turn, create a zombie and keep up this deadly dispute to get as much mana as possible for next turn. Let's hope they play a bunch of small creatures here. Thalia's Lieutenant enters the battlefield, grows the team, and Intrepid Adversary grows the Lieutenant. Oh, this is gonna be a blowout. Throw Jadar in front of the Cathar, sacrifice it with Deadly Dispute to draw two cards and create a treasure. Take two, I mean, we're just gonna clean up the board here. Swing in with the zombie, they take it, it decays, and now let's cast the Meat Hook Massacre. Make X equals three, so when it enters the battlefield, everything gets minus X minus X. Everything dies, we get back our Smurgol. Wait, shouldn't we like, gain life here? Oh right, they massacred the massacre. Thanks wizards. Anyways, play a land and since our zombie died this turn, Smurgol will trigger at the end step, turn himself into the ring bearer he always wanted to be, steals the land, pass the turn, Intrepid Adversary enters the battlefield, pays 2 to give it a Valor counter, and that's it. Sweet, let's see if we can start the engine here. Prosperous Innkeeper enters the battlefield, create a treasure. Rata Drabic, when it enters the battlefield, Innkeeper gains a life. We are on level 2 of the ring, so when the ring bearer attacks, we draw a card and discard a card. They just take it. I guess we still need to have a creature die this turn, so the ring tempts us at the end step. Use Phyrexian Tower to sacrifice Shambling Ghast. When it dies, we create create a treasure token. End of turn, Smurgo triggers, let's turn Prosperous Innkeeper into a ring bearer. Sorry Smurgo, but having one power is kinda convenient for the first ability of the ring. Sunrise Cavalier, 3 mana, 3-3 three, three, Trample Haste, whenever it switches between day or night put a 1-1 one, one counter on a creature. Okay, and another Thalia's Lieutenant, enters the battlefield, puts a counter on every human, swings for 5 with Trample, alright, down to 15, draw Faramir. That's actually pretty sweet. A little overcosted as a 4 mana 3 3, but at the beginning of our end step, if a creature died this turn, we draw a card, and whenever the ring tempts us, we create a 1 1 human token. When it enters the battlefield, we gain a life, a swing in with the ring bearer, draw Jada, okay, hit them for 1, cast Jada, and since the ring bearer is legendary, we can sacrifice our innkeeper, create a new copy of it. When it enters the battlefield, we create a treasure, and now since a creature died this turn, this end step is gonna be juicy, Jadar creates a zombie, Smurgol makes the ring tempts us, when the ring tempts us, Faramir creates a token, Smurgol steals the land, and Faramir's end step trigger draws a uh, land, okay. But still a pretty solid turn here, let's see what they got in store, Thalia Guardian of Thraben, okay, grows the lieutenant, Adeline Resplendent Cathar, okay, grows the lieutenant, swings for 5, Adeline creates an attacking token, grows the lieutenant, we are only taking 5 here, but I sure wouldn't mind drawing ugh, something else than a land. Okay, just a reminder, as soon as we draw Boromir, we got the ultimate infinite kill here. We'd mill them out with Smurgo, we already seen this. Faramir would create infinite 1-1 one -one human tokens from all the ring tempting. Prosperous Innkeeper would gain infinite life from all the Boromirs entering the battlefield and the Meat Hook Massacre would just ping our opponent to death from all the dying Boromirs. Sadly, all of these clips were from other games and even worse. Us. For some reason I forgot to attack with the ring bearer here, so we can't even try to loot away one of these lands. At least we still got the end step growing crazy again. Let's choose the 1-1 one -one as the ring bearer, steal a land, draw a... Oh, oh my god, okay, and we didn't cast any spells so it turns night. <laughs> Yikes. Swings with the Cavalier, 
Adeline creates another attacker, grows the lieutenant, block the token, take 5. Oh, and they pass back. Okay, now we did only draw a shambling ghast here, but let's see what our ring bearer can find. Oh, a smergol. <laughs> okay, now usually you wouldn't play this because of the legend rule, but since we got Rutterdrabic on the board, we can just sacrifice it to the legend rule and create a non legendary copy of it. Let's play the shambling ghast and a land, and now here comes the coolest part about the deck. Smurgol is really good in multiples. We got two of his end step triggers on the stack here, and for each of them, we will trigger both Smurgols and Farami, of course. Get a token, steal a land and another land, do all these things again for the second Smurgol trigger, and hope we get lucky on the Farami draw here. Huh, okay. Wow, the opponent actually getting day night value here. Swings for five again. Yep. Token, grow the lieutenant, block, take the hit, and they just pass back again. I mean, they might be holding up interaction for the combo or something, but our board state is just gonna gradually kill them. Cast the bowmasters, shoot their face. Oh, it turns night again. <laughs> Gotta get that counter value. Oh my god, another Smirgol. <laughs> I mean, this is just gonna be glorious. Cast it, create another non legendary copy. This I just end it to be honest. See what the ring bearer finds us. That's another bow masters, sure. With the lifelink of the adversary, they actually gained life with this attack, but the problem is we already stole nine of their lands. Five are on their battlefield, and they probably have one or two in their hand, which means that their deck should have pretty much exactly eight to nine lands left in their library. Well, what a neat coincidence that we got three Smergol triggers that will each trigger three Smergols, and all the other stuff, of course. So we're gonna ransack their library for exactly nine. Nine lands here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whoops. I guess we don't need the combo to win the game after all. Oh wow, did you just tap that like button? Well, thank you. I guess that means we gotta have a bonus game. Yep, that's a solid keep. Play a land, play a shambling ghast, see what we're up against. Azul's Cliffs as the land drop. Okay. With this Phyrexian Tower, we can actually get a pretty sick turn two here. Use it to sacrifice the Ghast, add two mana and a treasure. Now we have four mana to cast Faramir, and since a creature died this turn, we will even draw a card in the end step. Salundi Isle. Okay, our opponent might have just run into their nightmare matchup here. Let's play another Shambling Ghast, sacrifice it right away so a creature died this turn. Cast Orkish Bowmasters, enter the battlefield, shoot their face, create an army, swing for three, draw a card in the end step. Another MDFC land. Yeah, okay, so here's the deal. They are very likely playing a Goblin Char Belcher deck. It wins the game by activating the Belcher without having real lands in their deck, which is why they exclusively play MDFC lands that are spells on the front side. Unfortunately for our opponent, that means we can Diabolic Intent, get a card from our deck, get a Smurgol, play a land, cast it, and now at our end step, we get tempted by the ring, triggering Smurgol's ability, and since they technically don't have lands in their deck to steal. Uh. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Wanna see more of my content? Well, check out last episode where we try to win the game with 99 mountains and a monkey. This video and more, all in this playlist. Remember to tap that like button, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.